we've already talked about one major way that we can modulate the pain experience, and that is to use NSAIDs. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are going to affect the process out there at the, at the place where there's damage. If, if, there, if it's a neuropathic pain or if we can't, um, or if the NSAIDs are inadequate in, in uh, alleviating pain, then we go to the next step. And the next step typically is, is a narcotic. And one of the reasons that narcotics work is because there's an endogenous system in the brain that uh, uses opioid peptides with, that we make, endogenous opioid peptides. Uh, this system was initially discovered uh, by David Reynolds, who showed that he could, when, when he stimulated in the midbrain near the periaqueductal gray, he could actually do a, a laparotomy on a rat without any general anesthesia. This is not, um, probably not an experiment that would get approved today, but this was done back in 1969. Um, and it was, it was revolutionary. It showed that there is this system that can modulate the nociceptive pathways and that that system is intrinsic to the, to, to the nervous system. So the, the promise rapidly became how can we harness that ability of the nervous system to modulate pain, to, to alleviate pain. And one of the things that became rapidly clear is that the pathway, which was rapidly elucidated through the work of, of many uh, investigators, not David Reynolds, this is his only publication, um, uh, through many investigators found a pathway that led from the midbrain and down into this uh, spinal cord, into the trigeminal dorsal horn, and, and change the uh, ascending nociceptive message at that first central synapse. This entire pathway is chock full with opioid peptides and opioid receptors. And, uh, and so people have, um, in fact, looked at ways in which we can use opioids to alleviate pain. The first discoveries that really changed the, the experience was to deliver opioids directly into the spinal cord through intrathecal administration. Now, intrathecal administration is not quite directly into the spinal cord. It's, it's in that epidural fat between the, uh, the vertebral column and the dura. So there's a catheter that goes in there, delivers high-dose opioids, which, have, which um, are able to access the, uh, um, the spinal cord at, at high concentrations. And that is used for all manner of, um, of uh, surgeries and uh, pain alleviations. So uh, putting uh, intrathecal opioids, uh, allowing the spinal cord access to opioids is very effective in um, alleviating pain. We can actually even use opioids uh, administered uh, peripherally. In addition, we know that opioids act supraspinally. They act in the periaqueductal gray and in the mid, in the medulla, and actually even also in forebrain areas. So all of these areas are places where the opioids are going to act, and they act if they can act at each of the at more than one of these sites. They act synergistically, and they produce even more pain uh, alleviation. There is really nothing quite as good as morphine <laughs> for alleviating pain. And that is unfortunate because for two reasons. One is that it has, uh, well, actually three reasons. One is that it, it has some bad side effects. And one of the bad side effects, probably the worst side of, bad side effect is respiratory depression. So respiratory depression uh, can kill you. And opioids produce respiratory depression and if you are, if you get enough respiratory depression, you will not breathe and you will die. The second problem is that there's tolerance. So that the dose of narcotic that a person needs tends to increase over time. And the third problem, relate, these, are un, these are all interrelated problems, is that uh, the opioids can become addictive. They can uh, make, they can uh, become, uh, something that a person craves, that a person needs to have. And so separate from 
the, the pain relief. They can actually crave the opioid separate from the pain relief. Right now, there's really, um, we haven't reached the right balance between treating pain. So pain should be treated. People should not be in pain. And uh, trying to prevent, trying to make sure that people do not become inappropriately addicted to these um, opioids. Right now in the United States, we don't have that balance. We have an opioid epidemic where people are um, addicted and craving these prescription opioids. Um, and some people need them. A lot of people need them. They need them because no one should sit and no one should exist in pain for a long period of time. So this balance between treating pain and, and making sure that we don't have an ep we don't contribute to an epidemic of uh, of opioid overuse, opioid addiction, um, is is a balance that we really need to find a, as soon as possible. Um, the answer is not is not clear yet. It'll take information from both um, physicians and psychologists and social policy people and and pol polit politicians, et cetera but this is a, a, a big um, issue for the future.